The government has apologised for the failure to properly commemorate black and Asian soldiers who died fighting for Britain. And I'm Catherine Biarahanga at the Nairobi South World War I Commonwealth Cemetery. We're out of dozens of soldiers buried here. Only a handful are black Africans. The government has made a formal apology for the failure to properly commemorate the deaths of tens of thousands of black and Asian troops who fought for the British Empire during the First World War. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission found that more than 115,000 casualties weren't given headstones because of pervasive racism. Paul Adams has this report. At cemeteries and plots around the world, their sacrifice is commemorated with dignity and attention, names inscribed so that we may remember. But not all names. Tens of thousands of black and Asian soldiers fought and died for Britain. But when it came to marking their sacrifice, it was done differently, or collectively, or not at all. It was, says the government, a terrible mistake. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and the government both of the time and today, I want to apologise for the failures to live up to their founding principles all those years ago and express deep regret that it has taken so long to rectify the situation. More than a year after setting up a special committee, the organisation responsible for maintaining war graves has issued a formal apology. It's found that entrenched prejudices and the pervasive racism of imperial attitudes were to blame. The committee's report found that at least 116,000 and perhaps as many as 350,000 of those who died serving the forces of the then British Empire remain uncommemorated the vast majority of African, Indian or Egyptian origin. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission says it's taking action to correct the wrongs of the past. This research report is uh, welcome, it's sober, um, very, very disappointing reading, but actually it gives us the ability now, now we know the numbers and the, uh, the areas to look, we can start the searches properly and we can pick up on the failings of the past and ensure that we act today to put those right. The Commission says it'll implement all 10 of the committee's detailed recommendations. It'll search for more names, adopt third-party memorials and build new commemorative structures in collaboration with communities involved. The MP David Lammy presented the Channel 4 documentary that triggered the Commission's report. It's right and proper that the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and the Ministry of Defence consult appropriately in situ in those countries and ask those countries and those communities what they would like to see properly commemorate their war dead. At the Chatri Memorial in Sussex, the names of fallen Indian soldiers are recorded. These men were not forgotten. The Commission says it's determined to fulfil its original promise to commemorate equally all those who died in both world wars. Paul Adams, BBC News. Now, we will just talk a little bit more about that apology, the formal apology that was made this morning for the failure to commemorate black and Asian military personnel who gave their lives in the First and Second World Wars. Let's go to our correspondent, Catherine Biaranga, who's at a war cemetery near Nairobi. Catherine. Hi, good afternoon. I'm speaking to you from the Nairobi South World War I Commonwealth Cemetery, right in the heart of Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Now, just before we came on air, I had the opportunity of walking through these grounds and out of between 150 to 200 graves here, only three headstones bear the names of black Africans. Now, a five-hour drive south of Nairobi is another cemetery in a town called Voy. And there you do have another cemetery that commemorates white soldiers who fought during World War I. But just outside the perimeter fence, locals say are essentially mass graves with hundreds of African soldiers buried there. 
Now, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission has unreservedly apologised today and promised to right the wrongs of the past. But the question is, how are they going to do that? We're possibly talking of thousands of African soldiers who have been married, who have been buried in unmarked graves, who are not returned from the battlefield. So how will you bring their bodies back and give their loved ones the opportunity to commemorate them?